last week's video where I discuss how important it is to ride the curbs in Austria. It was interesting to see in the race how many cars broke down due to riding the curbs, uh, having various sensor issues and so on due to the vibrations caused by the curbs. Um, this week we will discuss the topic of camber and roll stiffness where I will be using this little buggy to help illustrate some of the points. Um, the idea for this video came from two friends who asked me via Facebook Messenger um, about some of the issues that they've seen. The very first uh, case is that of a rear wheel drive hot hatch with uh, more than 300 horsepower uh, with strut suspension on the front, KW uh, Club Sport coilovers, and he's running about three degrees of negative camber. So first of all, what is camber? So you can see on this buggy, the wheels are leaned in at the top. Um, that's called negative camber, and it's needed because when the vehicle rolls, uh, the wheels actually lose negative camber, um, and in extreme cases can go into positive camber. And in fact, so when you're cornering, you want the, the tires to still have, ideally still have some negative camber due to the squishing that the tires will, will undergo. So having some negative camber at max, yeah, maximum lateral acceleration will, will mean you get the maximum grip on the tires. So uh, the issue with um, uh, all cars is that when they roll, they lose uh, negative camber and so in order to counteract that, uh, for people driving on racetracks a lot, they typically yeah, use quite some negative camber compared to um, the, yeah, the car as it comes from the factory. Um, the issue is the negative camber is a trade-off between cornering grip and longitudinal, so braking grip. And in the case of, uh, of my friend in case number one, um, he has noticed that uh, uh, using endless brake pads that the ABS is cutting in a lot more often than before. And um, so his question was, does it make sense to reduce uh, the negative camber in this case to, to improve the braking? Um, and my answer is no, uh, because over an entire lap, uh, although the negative camber is uh, not so helpful for, for the braking, uh, for the cornering it is definitely helping and is why he is able to drive a lot faster than, uh, faster lap times than before. So uh, in general, whether, the, uh, whether he needs to reduce the amount of camber or maybe even increase it uh, will depend on the tire surface temp, well, on the tire temperatures. Uh, so with uh, a heat probe you would check the inside middle and outside and look at the tire prof the temperature profile of the tire uh, so that would be my advice in that case um, check the temperatures and then decide what to do but most probably is probably not necessary to reduce the camber um, the second question is from a slightly older car um, in this case it's a coupe sedan with about 240 horsepower from the 90s uh, probably not too difficult to guess which car that is also front uh, also strut suspension in the front um, and in this case although um, three and a half degrees of camber is already used the tire wear looks like it's coming from the uh, still coming on the outside of the of the tire. Um, so what to do in this case? Um, I would say in this case, if uh, the tracks on which um, the car is driven is not too bumpy and uh, there are not there are no huge issues with traction, uh, then I would say it's okay to go a bit further. Uh, further up in terms of spring stiffness or anti-roll bar stiffness. So once the um, If the springs and anti-roll bars are made stiffer then the vehicle will not roll as much and when it doesn't roll as much The camber loss will not be as great. And so with the same camber uh, You will use the the, the tire under uh, maximum lateral cornering conditions in a more upright um, Upright condition 
the tire contact will be reduced or, uh, on surfaces which are very uneven. Um, however, if the issue is mainly uh, cornering grip in, and, and wear of the outside shoulder on mostly flat racing tracks, then uh, it makes sense to uh, go up a bit in, uh, in roll stiffness. And so roll stiffness is something you can add either using springs or anti-roll bars. The, and, and the choice between uh, springs and anti-roll bars is um, of course a little bit more complicated, uh, but it depends on whether um, you need more vertical body control as well. Um, and finally, one, one other thing to worth mentioning is, um, uh, yeah, nicely is illustrated by this drawing on the left here. Uh, when you lower the, a car with strut suspension too much, there is the issue that the suspension geometry leads to even worse, um, even worse camber loss uh, when the vehicle is rolling, uh, which is what they're trying to illustrate here. And uh, so their point here is that if you lower the car, then with a uh, suspension geometry correcting kit, um, you, you can uh, yeah, s solve some of this camber loss problem. But of course, um, when you're making mods like this, it's important to check whether uh, you don't actually end up um, overstressing your components and creating even more problems. So, uh, it might even be safer just to raise the car a little bit to prevent it from rolling as much. Um, so in general, the more you lower the vehicle, the more it wants to roll. Um, due to the fact that you get less geometric uh, load transfer and, and you have more over uh, elastic. Um, oh, and maybe one final thought. So potentially another fix, uh, but this is not always possible is to say increase the caster if you increase the caster then the um, as you turn the steering wheel that also increases the camber gain from the caster uh, which allows you to use slightly less uh, static camber so hope you enjoyed the video uh, for more in-depth um, discussions of these topics please take a look at gracetracksetup.com thank you and uh, enjoy enjoy your weekend enjoy the next uh, Formula One race uh, or whatever race uh, you'll be watching this weekend. See you next time.